Um, as uh, Jungfren said, I will uh, talk about our implementation of the new 4Q FP, uh, elliptic curve on, uh, on an FPGA. Uh, this is a joint work of uh, four guys from four different institutions. So myself from uh, Aalto University in Finland, Andra Miele from uh, now, now in Intel, but uh, at EPFL at the time of the work, uh, Reza Azaderaks from uh, Rochester, and finally Patrick Longa from Microsoft Research. So uh, what is 4Q? So it's a new, F, uh, new elliptic curve which offers very high performance, uh, especially in software. Or we know that only on, on software. So it's, uh, it has been shown to be two or three times faster than uh, curve 25519, for example. And this has been shown to hold on many different uh, proce pro processor uh, platforms. Uh, but uh, the speed up comes from uh, employing four dimensional sc scalar decompositions, which require then uh, extensive pre-computations, which might turn into a complex control when implemented, implementing the operations on hardware. And for this reason, it's not really clear how suitable this uh, curve is for efficient hardware implementation. And this is the question that we are trying to address in uh, our answer in this uh, work. Okay, so 4Q was uh, introduced by uh, Greg Costello and Patrick Longa at Asacrypt uh, last year. So it's slightly over a year old curve. Um, it's a twisted Edwards curve uh, with a cardinality of the group uh, 392 times uh, a 246 bit prime. So it offers uh, sec uh, security of over 120 bits. It's a very nice curve from uh, many, in many respects. So First of all, it, uh, it's defined over a, a finite field or a quadratic extension field with a Mersenne prime P2 to 127 minus 1. So this gives us a very efficient uh, reductions. Then we can use the complete addi addition formulas of uh, Hiesel and others, which lead to uh, efficient point arithmetic. And then it uh, has uh, two efficiently computable endomorphisms, C and phi. And if we represent the, the 256-bit uh, scalar as a or compute four-dimensional decompositions for that, we can compute the scalar multiplication M times P uh, as a combination of uh, four, four smaller, smaller scalar multiplications with uh, different uh, points. Uh, Maps with the uh, with the efficiently computable endomorphisms and and uh, these uh, a1 to a4 are uh, 64 bit numbers only so they are th these smaller scalar multiplications are fast to compute especially if we combine them as I show uh, later in the talk so we implement uh, scalar multiplication only so we use this uh, scalar multiplication algorithm which uh, is sh shown on the on the left here. And now we, I will go step by step what kind of operations are required in this algorithm. So first, uh, we decompose and recode the scalar into a multiscalar, as I explained, of, uh, of uh, four, four values, A1 to A4. And in addition to, to having four short values, we, we recode these values in the sign-aligned form so that uh, we, we represent the scalar as a as a matrix of uh, four rows and uh, 65 columns. And uh, the first row contains only plus and minus ones. And the following lines uh, or rows are sign aligned with the first one so that uh, they contain only zeros and ones if the, if the first row is one, has a value one and uh, only zeros and minus ones in the case if, uh, if the first row has a value minus one. And, and this, uh, Sign alignment allows us to uh, allows to recode the, uh, the 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 multi scalar so that we have uh, have a sign which is the the first row and then uh, a point index from zero to eight which uh, shows which uh, particular uh, point we need to fit, uh, use from the pre computation which I will explain next. 
So we pre-compute all these uh, eight different points uh, with, uh, with the different uh, endomorphisms. And then we store these with uh, five coordinates into the memory. Why we use five coordinates? Uh, it's, it's because uh, in the uh, point addition formula that we use there in the, in the bottom, we uh, need to use uh, four, four, uh, four of these five coordinates uh, well, so that if we compute uh, a point addition, so we want to uh, add a point here, then we uh, fetch uh, four values so that we, we use this, uh, this, uh, this, and this. But if we want to compute uh, a point subtraction or subtract the same point, then we r just read these uh, coordinates in different order. So we these two first in different order, then the same set coordinate, but we then we use the, the, the negative of this, this value, which is also pre-computed. So we don't have to compute anything anymore. We just read them in, uh, in the correct order. But this pre-computation requires quite a lot of operations. So it's uh, 68 multiplications and 27 squarings and several additions. So this is non-negligible computation that we have to do in the, in the beginning before we can proceed to the, to the main operation of, uh, of this for loop. Uh, this for loop is, uh, is fully regular and constant time. So we always compute uh, 64 point uh, doublings uh, followed by uh, either a point addition or a, or a point subtraction, but because uh, of this uh, reading of the pre-computation, uh, pre-computed point, we, we always compute exactly the same operation, but with different values, regardless of whether we are adding or subtracting a point. And here we use the, the uh, Hissel's uh, formula, as I explained already earlier. This uh, algorithm from hardware point of view uh, yeah, it's quite a, a natural division of operations to, for two different units. So the uh, scalar decomposition and recoding is done in a scalar decomposition recoding unit, and everything else goes into the field arithmetic unit, which is highly optimized for this uh, particular Mersenne prime, prime uh, arithmetic. So first about the scalar unit. So uh, decomposing is mainly multiplications with uh, constants. And we perform this with a, with a truncated multiplier, which is built around a 17 times 264 bit multiplier, which is then implemented using uh, 11 of these uh, DSP blocks that uh, are available in Xilinx FPGAs. And this gives us the, the four smaller, uh, smaller scalars, and then we do the recoding for those scalars by using some simple bit manipulations and 64-bit additions only. So that's, a, that's easy com compared to this decomposition part of the scalar manipulations. Uh, this uh, unit uh, outputs the, the, the encoded values starting from, the, from this uh, M0 and V0, but the uh, scalar multiplication algorithm starts from the other end. So we first store, store these values in a uh, last in first out uh, buffers, which uh, then outputs them in reverse order. And then the main component is the uh, field arithmetic unit, which uh, has this uh, top level architecture where we have uh, a dual port RAM with a 127 bit uh, width. So we always uh, read one element of the F, uh, of FP at once, and, and then uh, we use two, two uh, addresses for storing one of the uh, FP squared element. Then we have a 127-bit uh, data path here and a control logic, which uh, consists of uh, FSM and a uh, fixed program ROM. So uh, let's take a look on the, on the uh, data path of this field arithmetic unit. So it consists of two paths. So we have a multiplier path, which is used for computing the integer multiplication, so 127-bit times 127-bit uh, multiplications using a, a, a pipeline 64 times 64-bit multiplier and an accumulator. Then we have another path which is used for two purposes mainly. So we reduce the, uh, the results of this integer multiplication by computing, the, by, by computing uh, an addition of the two halves of the, of the result. 
And this is thanks to the efficient Mersenne prime that we can do this, and then just absorbing the potential uh, carry. And we do that a second uh, addition always so that we have constant time. And then we use this adder path also for computing the additions and uh, subtractions in, in the field. Okay, let's look at an example of how we actually use this, uh, this data path for computing uh, operations in, uh, in FP squared. So one multiplication in FP squared consists of three multiplications, two additions, three sub subtractions in this uh, FP uh, by using these uh, formulas. And now the diagram here in the, in the bottom represents the data path. So that uh, uh, this is the dual port RAM. So each block is, uh, is one clock cycle. And now, now this now shows how the, how the data flows uh, through, the, through the data path. So here we have the input re registers that we have here. And then the multiplier pipeline here from here. And then the adders are, are, are here on the right. So we begin by reading the uh, operands for the first multiplication from the memory, and then we feed them into the multiplier pipeline. But at the same time, we read uh, the, the operands we need for these two, two additions and compute them at the same time when we are computing the integer multiplication. And then uh, we start the second integer multiplication, wait until it, it's ready. And now, now we already have the operands for this the, that we need for this third multiplication ready in the memory, and we can continue directly from that. But uh, now, actually, when we have uh, proceeded long enough with this uh, third multiplication, the uh, multiplier data path, uh, multiplier pipeline becomes idle, and we can actually start uh, computing already the, the first multiplication of the next mul multiplication in FP squared before finishing this first one. So it's uh, highly interleaved lived architecture. And finally, when we proceed here, we have computed all the multiplications of our first multiplication. We then uh, compute the final subtractions at the same time when we compute the second multiplication in FP squared. And uh, after 45 clock cycles, we write back the, the last result of our, our first multiplication. But at that time, we have already processed more than half of the of the second multiplication and already began the third one. Uh, and now when we uh, utilize this uh, kind of uh, uh, scheduling, we get the, these, these uh, uh, latencies for our field operations. So we see, for example, the that the multiplication takes 45 clock cycles, but we can start the next one already after 21. We have also uh, a slightly faster variant, in, but, but then, then we cannot start the next one as, as soon. But, uh, so this basically just computes the, the final subtractions a bit, bit earlier. Uh, uh, and in practice, uh, most of these additions can actually be also computed at the same time when we compute the multiplication, so they don't add up uh, latency at all. And now when we hand optimize uh, routines for different operations that we need in this uh, scalar multiplication algorithm, we get the following latencies. So we have, uh, for example, slightly over 4,000 clock cycles for the pre-computations. Uh, one double and add step takes uh, 354 clock cycles. And when we combine all this, uh, the scalar multiplication takes uh, uh, slightly less than uh, 30,000 clock cycles. Uh, what is um, noteworthy here is that uh, the scalar decompositions take uh, about 2,000 clock cycles, but because we can compute them at the same time with the pre-computations, the effective latency is zero. But this uh, has uh, importance in, uh, in multi-core architecture, which I will explain next. So because the, the scalar decomposition is so much faster than the, than the operations that we compute in the, in the field arithmetic core, we can actually uh, share that, share one scalar unit with uh, several field arithmetic cores. So that we first uh, decompose uh, one uh, scalar that is co corresponds to the to, uh, field arithmetic operations computed in this core, and then we start with the next one, which is processed here, and so on. Okay, so then we uh, implemented uh, this uh, implementation on a, a design on a Xilinx Zinc 7020 FPGA and got the following area results. So 
we use less than 13 percent of the of the uh, resources that are available on this particular FVGA and now it looks like the critical research for is would be the, the number of slices but if we take a closer look we see that actually most of these slice, slices go into the scalar, multi, uh, scalar recoding unit uh, and uh, if we do the multi-core architecture then uh, the limiting factor is actually the number of DSPs and that's what we get uh, when we put 11 cores on, on this FPGA. Uh, in theory, we should be able to fit 13, but uh, the routing failed if we used more than 11. So, so this is uh, utilizing the resources of the whole FPGA, although the percentages are less than 100%. And now this is how much is used for the scalar unit. Okay, then about the performance. Uh, the single core uh, runs at uh, 190 megahertz, which, which gives us uh, 157 microseconds for one scalar multiplication or over 6,000 uh, operations per second. Uh, the multi-core runs on a slightly lower clock frequency, which means that we have a longer latency, but we still get more than 10 times the throughput that we have with a single core. Our uh, implementation also supports uh, other operations like point validation and cofactor killing, but uh, if you are interested in those, look the paper. We also designed a, a third variant of the, of the design, which is using only Montgomery ladder, so we don't utilize the endomorphisms in this, and then we don't have any scalar recoding unit, we don't have any pre-computation, so the implementation is sim significantly simpler and uh, also smaller, but slower. So we only get like uh, slightly over 3,000 operations per second with that variant. Um, it's of course important to uh, compare one's work to what is found in the literature. And there are many, many ECC implementations available, also our prime fields. But the comparison is extremely difficult. There are multiple reasons for this. So, so the optimization goals might be different. Uh, the FPGA that is used is different and so on. So we uh, present the full comparisons in the paper, but in this uh, presentation I will focus on, on comparing our design against the, the one that is the closest counterpart. So Sastrick and Gunnes' uh, Curve 25519 design, which is also implemented on the same FPGA with similar optimization goals and so on. Oh, sorry. No. So uh, now if we uh, compare the, our single core architecture against their single core architecture, we see that uh, our design is uh, slightly, slightly larger, but quite a lot faster. So we get uh, over two and a half times the performance of, of this curve 5519 uh, five design. And even if we compare the throughput per DSP, like a speed area metric, we get almost twice the, twice the performance out of the FPJ. Uh, then if we take the uh, Montgomery ladder version where we don't utilize the endomorphisms, we are actually uh, smaller except for the programs, but, uh, but, but on DSPs, uh, and still get 28% uh, improvement in the, in the throughput. Uh, and the speed, uh, the speed area metric is also better. Uh, Sastrick and Gunnes also presented a multi-core architecture, but in their case, the shared resource is not a, a scalar unit because they don't do any scalar manipulations, but, uh, but they used uh, a shared inverter because inversion in, on curve 25519 or in this field of 25519 is uh, much more demanding operation than what it is in our quadratic extension field. So it makes sense to, to use a shared inverter. But in our case, the, the, the shared resource is the scalar unit, and here it's the inverter. But uh, they managed to use all the, all the DSPs for their uh, design, and they didn't experience any, any reduction in the, in the clock frequency. So, but, but we are still exactly twice as fast as, as they are. They, they are with their multi-core architecture. So both, both utilize all the resources that are, or, or fully, re, fully utilize the, the Zynx 7020 FPGA. So these are quite well comparable results. Okay, so uh, what are the conclusions? So we showed that uh, the uh, 
speed advantages that uh, are visible on, on software for 4Q also carry on to the, to the hardware side. So that's the, the main result. So we get uh, two or two and a half times the performance of Curve, Curve uh, 25519 with this, uh, with this new 4Q FPGA, uh, elliptic curve, sorry, on, on an FPGA. Uh, how to continue from this? Uh, this was the first implementation. There are, there is uh, room for optimizations. Uh, for example, we, uh, we focused on, uh, on uh, optimizing the speed area ratio, but in some applications, it's very important to have uh, the shortest possible latency. So that's one, one point. Uh, our uh, design is protected against the timing attacks and, uh, and simple uh, side channel attacks like uh, SPA but uh, it doesn't uh, claim any protection against the DPA or, uh, or more advanced uh, single trace attacks. Uh, so that, that's uh, an important future work also. So thank you. Any uh, questions? <laughs>